Wonderware continues to innovate and expand its connectivity offerings. The Wonderware Web Service Client OI Server is another addition to the family of our Operations Integration Servers OI Servers. With our Web Service OI Server, we want to continue delivering on our connectivity simplicity paradigm and extend that to web services. It is important to us to deliver a consistent connectivity experience. As such, we treat connectivity to web service in the same way we would other devices in your application. Whether you are connecting to a PLC, an IoT Edge device, or a web service, the connectivity experience should be consistent and very seamless. Now, given the vast variability between web services, we want to ensure your experience is fruitful from the start. We will be taking you through a series of tips. Tip number one, connecting to a SOAP web service. When attempting to create a connection to a web service, it may not be obvious to you whether you need a SOAP or a REST type connection. SOAP stands for Simple Object Access Protocol. It is an XML-based messaging protocol that relies on HTTP. To describe the functionality offered by the web service, a schema is used and it is referred to as the Web Service Definition Language, WSDL. You will notice that connections to this type of web services end with the WSDL identifier at the end, as it is required to have the information to expose the operations that are required by the web service. In this example, the WSDL definition of this sample calculator web service exposes the arithmetic operations that are allowed, as well as the input parameters for each operation. Tip number two, connecting to a REST web service. A second type of connection is a REST or RESTful type web service connection. RESTful web services are designed for the web. Instead of relying on a schema that exposes specific operations, they rely on standard operations to read, write, update, or delete, or use other standard type operations with the web service. In RESTful language, they use operations such as GET, PUT, POST, and DELETE. Tips number three and number four relate to the built-in testing support for the connection. We'll go back to our calculator example. First, we're checking the connection. The connection is successful. That returns the operations in the parameters. We actually have a set of inputs that we can now directly test with the web service. So I can input the parameters value here and then execute a test, which will then go connect to the web service and return a set of results. The result set is here. Also, as part of the test, we actually show the response time that it took the web service to respond to the required operation. This is part of tip number four, which will then can be considered when you're configuring the update interval in your device groups. Tip number five, the result set is the device reference list. When we perform the test operation, based on the inputs that we have entered here, we'll receive a result set. In this case, it's the sum of 4.5 and 67. The actual tag names in the results column of the results table are the representation of those tag names in the device itself. We have also some built-in device references such as the error message and the result set that are used as part of the built-in operations. Tip number six, variable support in web service address. When you create a RESTful type connection, we'll give it a name, you will notice that the default URL address that we give you has some information surrounded by double angle brackets. These parameters surrounded by double angle brackets are actually considered variables to the web service address so that you can use a name or a value to replace the information in that variable. Now, when we click analyze, you will notice that the parameters are set in a table with values attached to it. If we perform the test, you will notice that the resulting URL has the values that you enter for those parameters, and then the test will show the result set. It's very important to notice here that you can actually use those in your reference list in your application. In other words, those variables can be tag names or reference fields in your application, so you can drive a variable 
query. Let's do a specific example. We're going to now connect to a weather service and we'll click the analyze button. Now, because I don't have any variables here, you would notice that one of the parameters is a city name, London. Now, when I actually execute the test, we'll get the weather for the city of London, but it would actually be much more valuable if we can make London a variable. So what we will do now is instead, we will use the angle brackets and call the variable city. When I perform the analysis of the connection, now city is a variable and I can use London or a different city, in this case, Los Angeles. When I perform the test connection at the bottom, now you will notice that the result set will come tied to the city Los Angeles. So in essence, I can use this field here at the bottom tied to the parameter city as my variable source so I can dynamically change the web service address and have a dynamic field to it. Tip number seven, leveraging your device item alias table. Continuing the weather example, we have a result set here all of these items are actually fields that can be used directly in your application. But they're a little bit cryptic. And if you wanted to use a more user-friendly name, we could actually use the device items to create the alias names and the item reference. But what we do is we actually provide a way to export all the information that has been provided by the Weather Web Service and post it in your device items tables. Now you have a simplified alias name and you can make it even simpler if you just want to use it by, for example, the name itself. Now you have a very simple name that you can use in your application to tie it to it as reference. Tip number eight, array-based to name-based mapping support. Some web services, for example, Wonderware Online, can return data in a structured format. In this particular case, we are actually returning the tag name dictionary of Wonderware Online and it returns the entire structure in an array format, in a numeric array format. But over time, the position of this information may vary or may change in the location of the array. So it is critical that we then can source the information based on a unique variable. For example, the tag name. We have provided that capability by finding tags that are unique for example, tag name in this case, and then use that as the source that will return the information. Instead of a numeric format, once we run the test again in a name-based format so that I can now reference my information based on tag names instead of array elements. Tip number nine, event-based data update support. Instead of using the traditional update interval configuration under the device groups where we use a pulling period, we're going to use zero for this value. This is basically setting the update interval so that we have to trigger it manually. Best explained through an example. Here, our connection to the weather web service, we will change the name of the city that we want to request the data from, from London to Los Angeles. Now, instead of doing it automatically, we actually ask the weather service manually to request the data and the information goes to the weather service and now it retrieved the five day weather forecast. Let's see how we did that trigger connection to the web service. We are actually triggering the reference dot run attribute in the weather web service and we'll see how that is configured in the OI server. The dot run parameter is really a system tag that exists in every OI server configuration. Tip number 10, authentication support. Different web services will provide different authentication mechanisms. This example of the weather web service just requires a token to access the web service application. Other web services such as Wonderware Online, for example, supports both basic as well as OAuth authentication. With basic authentication, you just need to supply the username and a password. With OAuth authentication, you have to supply additional information in order to be able to access the information from the web service. That is actually best explained through an example. Let's say you want to check into a hotel. Before you can access your room, you actually need to go to the registration desk and provide some information to the clerk for them to give you the key to your room. 
that key to your room is what we call the token. Now, if we expand this to the web service example, first you go to the registration server, they give you an access token, and once the web service has that access token, it can then go back and forth with the resource server without having to go back to the registration desk. As we see the example here, I'm trying to access a web service that will source me with alarm and events information, but the registration server is actually a different URL address. Now for that, I have to provide a username and password before the web service will give me the token. In other services like Wonderware Online, if you are using OAuth authentication, that procedure is actually done at the server, which gives you then back the bearer token. Tip number 11, writing values to a web service. In case you have the need to send information to a web service, you can use the post or put operation. In this particular case, we're gonna show you how to post new values to tags that have already been created in the Wonderware online application. In this case, the inlet pressure, outlet pressure, and tank level. This case uses the JSON format and up updates the body tag of the application. Now, if you needed to do this from application server, we're using the Newton soft library here to create the JSON string. This script depicts exactly the same information that we did in the body of the OI server. The attribute then is updated. And as you can see, the reference updates the body of the post attribute in the OI server. Well, there you have it. 11 tips and tricks so you can successfully start using your web service OI server. Thanks for watching.